Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. So I have a confession to make. I'm in love with a tiny flash-based disk on module. Okay, okay, I know that sounds really boring, but stick with me because this tiny bit of industrial computing kit might just make the perfect hard drive replacement for old IDE based computers, including perhaps Power Macs that are otherwise very resistant to SSD upgrades. So today let's test this tiny thing out, see how its speed compares to other IDE hard drive options, and then see if it actually installs Mac OS and boots in my early iMac G3, the world's most finicky Mac. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy awkwardly personifying random bits of old tech, and uh, I know I do, say hello, Phil. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We do a lot of wacky experiments on vintage computers around here, and sometimes they're even useful. So I ordered a few of these disk on modules, not really thinking too much about them. Originally, I was gonna try and use one as a space saving open firmware compatible boot disk in my souped up Linux based Power Mac G5 that I've actually been using to stream to Twitch. They're basically just small little SSDs that install directly into an IDE or SATA motherboard connector without the need for any bulky data cables. They save a ton of space and they're cool, fast and reliable especially compared to spinning disk drives, which makes them perfect for industrial applications that only need a small amount of storage, like four gigabytes, that'll last for a long time running unattended. They're also one of the few PETA SSDs that you can actually buy. The desktop market switched to SATA pretty soon after SSDs first started coming out. So it was really only industrial applications that kept up the demand for SSDs with old style IDE connectors. Which leads to the two real downsides of using these disk on modules with old computers, at least in my mind, price and capacity. From a cost per gigabyte perspective, these things are pretty terrible. This four gig module costs almost 30 bucks and a 16 gig module goes for 50 bucks on Amazon, which incidentally still has a lot of these things for sale, which is pretty surprising given their purely industrial use case. Now, 30 bucks for four gigs sounds pretty terrible. I mean, at that price, if you want quiet, solid state IDE storage, why not just toss in a way bigger CF card in a cheap adapter? Which is exactly what I've been doing all this time in most of my old computers. For example, as the boot disk in my one gigahertz G4 upgraded beige G3, which is, pretty convoluted and densely packed in there. You see, this thing actually runs 10.4 Tiger from an SSD attached to a SATA controller card, but you need ex post facto on 10.2.8 to actually tell the machine to run from that SATA card. So that's what I've been using in there, a four gigabyte CF card on one of these StarTech adapters with 10.2.8 and Mac OS 9. Now it is slow, but it works. And I only really need it sometimes but it also takes up a ton of space in there. And airflow is at a premium, given that the processor upgrade is about five times more powerful than the stock CPU crammed into this desktop case. I mean, the official instructions for the CPU upgrade tell you to take the fans off the CPU upgrade in order to fit it in this case. That can't be good. And come to think of it, the janky CF card adapter route isn't the best price per gigabyte either. I mean, a decent four gigabyte CF card costs at least 12 bucks, often more. And then you have to factor in the adapter. You can get them for eight or $9 for a nice reliable StarTech one, like the one I have here, or go up to like 15 bucks or more for even fancier ones. So this exact setup that I have in this machine is actually already at 20 bucks for four gigs. And that's on the low end of the price range, but don't forget, the disk on module means that you don't need an IDE cable either, which is a huge plus for airflow, of course, but let's factor in the price of a cable. I mean, they're at least six bucks on Amazon. So that's $26 for this whole CF card adapter setup that we're replacing 
with a $28 tiny disc on module, which is probably gonna be way faster and again, way better on airflow. Honestly, how did I not think to try this sooner? Anyway, let's see just how much faster this thing is. We'll use a standard install of macOS 9 as a base to take benchmarks from, straight from original retail media, no less. And we'll test it against the CF card adapter setup. And then let's also test it against some other common options for retro IDE machines, like a SATA SSD on one of these SATA to IDE adapters, an mSATA drive on an IDE adapter on an other IDE adapter, which is actually what I use in a lot of my machines. And then we'll install the disk on module in this Revision D iMac G3, a machine that hasn't liked any other solid state hard drive that we've thrown at it. And then we'll give it a Doug score. Wait, sorry, wrong show. And then we'll find out if this adorable little industrial drive is really the best solution for keeping old IDE based machines alive. Just like today's sponsor, Squarespace is the best all-in-one solution for your business or personal web presence. Easily create the web presence you've been dreaming of building, even with no experience using Squarespace's all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like say I wanted to build a website about how great these little disk on modules are for old machines. With Squarespace, I could have that up and running in minutes. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and mobile friendly. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So help the channel and check out squarespace.com slash actionretro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code actionretro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so let me crack open the Power Mac G3 with the G4 upgrade and show you just what kind of space constraint we're working with. So if we undo the, ow. <laughs> so if we undo these extremely brittle latches, the whole thing kind of opens up like a car hood, exposing the extremely cramped interior. And this long fellow here is the G4 upgrade, and it's about twice the length of the original processor. And it has all this other stuff on the side here, like an extra power connector, which uh, really eats into the room. And we have our SATA SSD connected to a SATA card back here, which uh, has its own cables. And then we have the CF card adapter, and the double-sided tape is no longer sticky which has its own cables coming off. And I have a splitter cable here and a splitter cable here for the SATA drive and all these cables pushing up against the processor, which obviously is not ideal. And just look at the difference here. Instead of all of this, we can literally have just this plug directly into the socket here. For the same amount of storage, probably way faster, and uh, <laughs> it uses almost no space. It's just directly in the slot there as if it were an expansion card. I just think that's so cool. Now it does have its own power cable because IDE, or at least full-size IDE, does not provide its own power, but still, that's a pretty tiny cable compared to all of this nonsense. And being an industrial flash disk module, I'm pretty sure this has some extra stuff in there to make it more robust. I read online that some of these have their own wear leveling built in, although I couldn't find if this particular model that I got on Amazon has that same feature. So what I wanna do first is test this CF card by doing a fresh install of macOS 9 and then run some disk benchmarks on it and then we'll repeat the same process on the flash disk module and then a SATA SSD with an IDE adapter and then an mSATA SSD with an IDE adapter. And we'll save all the results on a zip disk so that we can compare them all to one another. And I also have the drivers on here for the Sonnet upgrade card. Okay, so first let's do a standard install of macOS 921 on the freshly initialized CF card 
and we'll have all the options at default and we'll time it and see just how long it takes. Okay, we got about seven minutes and 20 seconds for the full install. Booting into good old macOS 9.2, and we'll be using this handy copy of MacBench 4, downloaded from the Macintosh Garden. All right, so we're not gonna worry too much about these base benchmarks, which are from a Power Macintosh 6160, a far slower machine than our G4 one gigahertz. And we're only gonna run the disk tests. So let's let this go. All right, benchmarks complete. Let's save them to a zip disk. Okay, now let's install our industrial flash disk module. Just look at that. Look how much less space this setup takes up. Okay, ready to install onto the disk on module. We've got seven minutes, 20 seconds to beat. Let's see if we can. Okay, so we clocked in at six minutes and 37 seconds, quite a bit faster than the CF card. Although honestly, I thought it would be a little bit faster than that, but let's run our benchmarks and get a real idea of the speed of this disc. Okay, booted off the disc on module. Let's run the benchmarks. All disc tests, run test suite. All right, benchmarks are complete. Let's save them to the zip disk. Okay, so I've got the SATA SSD just kind of dangling out the top here because actually there's no room inside the case with all the other stuff for the adapter. But let's check the Mac OS 9 install speed. Okay, well that was kind of shockingly faster probably about a full minute. Let's take our benchmarks. Well, I don't think this Mac likes this adapter because we're booting up and getting error type 11. So we'll chalk that up as another win for the disk on module, which worked just fine. Let's try a different SATA SSD, this time mSATA. Okay, so just about the same as the other SSD that wouldn't boot at five minutes, 36 seconds. Let's see if we can actually boot off of this drive. Okay, well, apparently this Beige G3 is one of those Power Macs that just doesn't like SSD adapters over IDE. So yet another point for the disk on module. Okay, so since we haven't gotten any of these SSDs to work in here, just for fun, Let's try an old IDE drive. This is a four gigabyte Apple branded Western Digital and uh, I have no idea what it came out of, but this will be fun for a baseline to see just how much of an improvement the disco module makes over a stock machine. Okay, we got eight minutes, 35 seconds. Honestly, it's not that dramatically slower than the CF card. Okay, so here are the final benchmarks and uh, it's pretty telling. I set the spinning hard drive as the 100% line here in blue. The purple line is the disk on module and the yellow line is the CF card. So in the overall score, you can see that the CF card is quite a bit faster than the old spinning hard drive at 187% of the speed but the disk on module is 288% of the speed. That is, <laughs> that is a ridiculous difference and that is awesome. And it's pretty much across the board. There's a couple areas where actually the spinning disk wins, uh, specifically in these sequential reads. And I think that makes sense, but I'm not an expert in why a spinning disk is better in sequential reads. I'm sure someone will put something in the comments below with an explanation. But yeah, just look at that. Random reads, 
The solid state storage is off the charts. Honestly, from these scores and from the reliability, the quietness, and what appears to be the compatibility, so far I can definitely recommend going with one of these fairly inexpensive disk on modules. But there's one more test we need to do before I can really wholeheartedly recommend it. And that's in the old Revision D iMac G3, which so far has not worked with any hard drive adapter that we've tried with it. And right now is actually still running on the original spinning hard disk. Okay, so I'm not gonna make you suffer through watching me wrestle this thing apart on the floor. So I've already gone ahead and installed that disk on module, which actually looks quite satisfying sticking out of that IDE port on this little motherboard. But it's all installed, it's all connected back together, and it now has an install of macOS 9 and 10.2.8 on it. So here's the moment of truth. Can this disk on module be the SSD for this early iMac G3? Woohoo! Look at that, we are booted into macOS 10.2 off of the disk on module. <laughs> and that is so exciting. It appears to be working flawlessly. I mean, none of the other SSD options that I've tried, any other adapter, even eventually the CF card adapters, it all just be slow and then would often just fail to boot sometimes. Now, if you're thinking about doing one of these disk on modules in your own tray loading iMac G3, there is one thing to note. The CD-ROM ribbon cable is too short. It does not go over the disk on module and uh, won't let the CD-ROM drive actually sit flat in its housing. So what I'm gonna do actually, now that I know this works, is I'm going to make an extension cable here. I'm just going to snip these wires, solder on some new wires, and uh, I'm sure that'll be just fine. It's not like you can actually see inside the Mac to see my little bodge job. But that's something you're going to have to consider because this is a 50 pin cable and uh, I'm not sure if you can get a longer version of this already pre-made. So something to consider, but it works. Okay, so that'll do it for this video. And wow, what a real and unequivocal success. These disc on modules, they're fantastic. I mean, I really think that I've shown that from a cost perspective, they're really not that much worse than some of the other options that we're using, especially on Macs that are really finicky about which adapters you plug into their IDE connection. And it's so fast and it leaves so much space open. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're perfect. They're tailor-made to go into these vintage machines. So I've already gone ahead and ordered a bunch more, including a 16 gigabyte one that I just got in, which is gonna go into Another iMac that you haven't seen on this channel before, but if you've been following Twitch, you've actually seen it streaming, an iMac G3 streaming directly to Twitch. So I'll put some links to these in the description below. Surprisingly enough, they're on Amazon brand new, and I just got this King Spec one, which actually says on the back, they can go up to 32 gigabytes. So <laughs> I don't see any of those on Amazon, but I'm gonna try to find some. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like these, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Huck K Mods, John Mallman, Nick Hamsey, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.